A very good evening to you from the KTN News Centre. I am Ben Kitile. Good evening and welcome to the broadcast this third day of May 2018. You, we are glad you could join us on your most qualified newscast in town. KTN Prime begins right now. The top stories tonight. <laughs> Thousands of learners yet to report to school for term two as tens of schools are flooded countrywide. We believe we are doing our job, we are doing the right thing. Three IBC commissioners yet to submit their resignation letters, says Chair Wafula Chabukati. Without a free press, then there can be no progress and there can be no development. Plus, the world marks World Press Freedom Day amid rising cases of attacks on journalists and media houses. I'm ready to, to start. I will be uh, from uh, next uh, Sunday. And FKF appoints Sebastian Ming as Arambi Star's head coach. Welcome to the broadcast. Our sign language interpreter is Gideon Bogo. Let's begin from the newsroom. In the latest survey report by the Media Council of Kenya and research firm Ipsos indicates about 44% of Kenyans have confidence in the media. However, Kenya still does not fare well internationally with the 2018 Reporters Without Borders Index ranking Kenya at 96 position out of 180 countries. This as Kenyan journalists joined the entire world in marking the World Press Freedom Day today. A series of incidents captured on camera provide a glimpse of just how safe, free or not, journalists are in line of duty in Kenya. And as journalists marked the World Press Freedom Day, a report by Ipsos and Media Council of Kenya showed about half of all Kenyans have confidence in the media despite perceivably shrinking freedoms. The perception is that our media are being routinely attacked by security forces. They are public threats uh, by politicians and their followers, and there is general intimidation. That perception is corroborated by random attacks of journalists in line of duty in the past few months, both by state and non-state actors, culminating in TV channels switch off in early 2018. Sometimes you find that uh, when Independent media is telling stories that are going counter to uh, governments or top politicians. They sometimes resort to uh, options outside the law to try and deal with those issues. The state of the media survey further pointed out that 54% of Kenyans opposed the January media shutdown with 36% of the 2003 respondents supporting the government's move. Internationally, the 2018 Reporters Without Borders Index ranks Kenya at 96 out of 180 countries in terms of press freedoms, Tanzania at 93 and Uganda at 117. You see when, where they are ranking Tanzania and Uganda, you find that Uganda or Tanzania is ranked favorably and Uganda is ranked at 117. But uh, I mean the reality on the ground in Tanzania, I think, most of us will know that now the repression on media there is even bigger than what it should be or what it was before. Africa's best countries in media freedoms are Ghana, Namibia and South Africa in a list topped by Norway, Sweden and Netherlands. North Korea, Eritrea, Syria and China were also ranked as the countries with the least freedoms for journalists. Mark Namaswa, KTN News. President Uhuru Kenyatta yesterday steered clear of the controversial push to have constitutional changes before 2022, instead making national cohesion and reconciliation the key highlights of his State of the Nation address. But why did Uhuru avoid the referendum subject despite the attention it has attracted from his deputy and his close allies who smell a sinister motive after the newfound love between the president and opposition leader Raila Odinga? Senior political affairs reporter Chris Thairo digs some more. Of course, the president must speak to uh, the issue of the clamor for constitutional change. He's a, he's a leader of the largest coalition or the largest party in parliament. 
That was four days before State of the Nation address by President Uru Kenyatta in the 12th Parliament. And just like Dwale, many Kenyans expected the president to pronounce himself on the clamor for constitutional changes which has threatened to cause divisions within the ruling Jubilee Party. The president clearly is not interested in 2022. Um, he's interested in having the country come together. He's interested in his legacy after he retires uh, in 2022. So therefore discussing uh, um, uh, issues referendum, which already seems to cause a divide within you know, the, the larger political uh, arena, would be actually antagonizing the same agenda that he wants to achieve. The deputy president is already on record being against any push to have a referendum, a stand that contradicts that of opposition leader Raila Odinga, who already has a secret deal with President Uru Kenyatta. We don't know exactly whether it was part of the issue that they discussed and agreed with uh, uh, Raila Odinga. If you commented on the referendum, you'll have been chumping the gun because we are not yet there. And referendum will only come when there is constitutional amendments when they have proposed that we have to amend the constitution in either way, so that uh, that now will give room for the referendum talk to come about. And we are aware that uh, he wants now the stake in government. He wants, he wants some cabinet secretaries. He wants to have some part of the government. And that is why it is reminiscence to 2007-2008, where we had the Grand Coalition government or the Nusumukate government. And that is what uh, uh, Raila wants in this. It is not just about the handshake of peace, unity and development. It is about he wants the share of this government. However, Deputy President William Ruto's allies are not comfortable with the new found unity between President Uru Kenyatta and opposition leader Raila Odinga. And they say they smell a rat. The reason they want to change the form of governance is that we have ceremonial president who is elected by the people and we have executive prime minister who is chosen by the elected legislators. It means that they are want to undermine the presidency of Ruta. They are just preempting early enough because they have realized they can't stop Ruta from becoming the president. So now they want to now see how they can water down the powers of presidency. I believe that any changes that we are going to make, it will benefit all Kenyans, including the deputy president and his team, because... We realize that we, we are not going to go to another election and then come out divided the way we were in, in 2017. It's possible that the president may not want to uh, come out f strongly and firmly and convince people perhaps could only support as a friend and, and not necessarily convince people that you must vote for this particular uh, uh, candidate who is William Ruto. So the friendship, yes, has its own space, but politics is a different ballgame. It's not about friendship. It's about interest. Already there is a 14-member committee that will be tasked with coming up with recommendations on whether there is need for constitutional changes before the 2022 general election, as well as how to ensure there is inclusivity in the country even after any hotly contested presidential polls. Chris Dairo, KTN News. A Nairobi court has briefly stopped the suspension of the Kenya National Union of Teachers, NAT Secretary General Wilson Sosion. While issuing the conservatory orders, High Court Judge Maureen Onyango directed the Registrar of Trade Unions, the Teacher Service Commission, and NAT Deputy Secretary General Hezbon Otieno to file their responses before May 9th and appear for hearing on May 10th. Shadrach Miti has been on this, and as he tells us, Osiona has dismissed those pushing for his removal, vowing to remain in office until 2021. <laughs> There is a leadership crisis at the Giant Teachers Union, NAT. There have been a lot of issues around the leadership of this union for the last couple of days, which I call a storm in a teacup. A faction led by Deputy Secretary General Hezbon Otieno and Acting National Chairman Weekly Fomiche suspended Secretary General Wilson Sosion for what they termed as misconduct. But as the suspension hung on his head on Thursday, Sosion was at the NAT headquarters to respond to his suspension. The Secretary General, Honorable Wilson Sosion, is suspended from office. Do you know who a Secretary General is? Even to dream and to contemplate suspending, you must think twice. Armed with a court order cushioning him from actions such as suspension from his current position in the union, Sassion told his journalists that he will not vacate office until the union's constitution is followed. I am prepared to differ with anybody and stand alone to defend resolutions. 
of our members. And that is basically what I've done. Those calling for its removal have accused him of illegally holding two jobs, the Secretary General and the nominated member of Parliament representing workers in the National Assembly. I'm not leaving Parliament. Yes. And I am not leaving my position of Secretary General as well. Those who are dreaming, imagining, conversing, my removal as the Secretary General, you are in for more surprises. Yes. Although those calling for his removal are banking on the forthcoming annual delegates conference to ratify the decision, that plan may fail since the only agenda for the ADC will be the mini election of the chairman and his two deputies who have since retired. I take the acting position of the Secretary General until such a time when decisions will be made. If you want to replace me, come in 2021. Yes. April. The case filed by Sosion is set for hearing on May 10th, but the embattled Secretary General has vowed not to vacate office, claiming those pushing for its removal are enemies from within, working with the external forces out to bring down the union. Shadrach Miti, KT News. Now the news floods in the county of Boringo have pushed school opening to a non date Institution administrators now they are um, at heavy losses uh, in terms of stared heavy losses in terms of infrastructure even as learning has stalled in Marigat area schools such as Sintan, Longiwan, Salabani, uh, Loropil and Ngambo remain closed. When the floodgates open heavier and harsh nothing moves but the raging waters Ordinarily, lessons would be on at Sintan Primary School, but a new lesson is emerging, that of the unforgiving torrents from above. So, we have a class of Furiga, but we don't have to use it as well as we have to use it as well as we Floods have invaded this school just as it has the neighboring homesteads, worse off heating at the oldest hours. Sasa unajua maji kama hii inakuja usiku wa manane. Sasa mtu hujajitarisha kuondoka kwa sababu sasa ulikuwa unaishi kwa kwa hata hujawahi kuona floods kama hii. School second term is a time to settle and focus on national examinations, but the angry runoff would not give learners a chance. Sasa si darasa la nane, cadet. Tungepata tu msaidie ili tupate hata mahali ya kusoma. The corridors are choking and the floor flooding even playgrounds. On a regular school day, this field would be a buzz with 458 pairs of lively legs and shouts of play, but it stands gagged by the floods. <laughs> Makeshift classes giving in to the Accio power, as residents risk it all to salvage learning materials. School pit latrines have succumbed, posing a health challenge. At Ngambo Girls Secondary School, dormitories and teachers' quarters have submerged and not a single student has reported to school. Around the school, homesteads soak in the rain and farm toils lost to the furious floods. Over 300 families have been displaced. Elsewhere, an elderly woman drowned in Chepkulo Nyangores River in Bomet County. It is day two since the tragedy occurred, but divers are yet to retrieve her body. As the search continued, 15 bodies of unknown people were discovered. Stanley Mutai, who is in charge of disaster and rescue team in the area, suspects that the 15 might have been swept away during the heavy rains. Tarakali wafikiria sahi hawa kwa watu kwa emergency wataenda wapi. Because hata wakifewa tents kesho na mblangeti na red cross wataenda wapi. Mutu wa yesu weka tents kwa maji. Watoto wa yesu ogelea kwa darasa kama mba. The call for help resonates louder even as the loss is so higher. Ray Polo, KT News. You're watching KT and Prime. Many thanks for staying with us. Let's take a quick commercial break here on the broadcast. When we come back, we have a lot for you, including... Uh, the chairman of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission of Fulache Bukati appearing before the National Assembly's Justice and Legal Affairs Committee. We have the details for you. <laughs>